Just from being crazy on the camera? Just from being crazy on the camera. And that's kind of clicking for me right now. Like, that's why people actually what? want to view things. <laughs> it's because well, it's so ridiculous, right? It is. It is. We've got to do the crazy. It's all right to be just a little bit crazy. Being creative is being a little bit crazy in just the right vibration. With that in mind, you should understand God's completely insane. Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Getting everything ready for tomorrow. I'm taking off for Arizona. Overcoming your creativity blocks. Woohoo! You want to know why this is something that I'm so passionate about? I'm so excited. I just landed in Phoenix and everything like that, and uh, it is an interesting overcast day. I was told that Phoenix is a really sunny place, but not really. It's kind of overcast today, and I'm actually enjoying that because I'm pretty acclimated to the cold right now because Portland is freezing and over my years I've spent an exorbitant amount of time being blocked, stuck, creative, stuck in my emotions, stuck in just every sense of the word and not really able to let that creativity flow in such a way that I can communicate effectively, I can have fun, I can do enjoyable things with my life. I am so looking forward to being able to go off and just go explore a new place, a new, a new state, a new country after that, you know, Costa Rica, and, you know, really go off and do some more self-exploration. Yeah. Oh, 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 I have an idea! And what I really want to help do is pull up that mirror and show you how awesome some of the ideas that you have are and just how awesome they really can be. But I was talking about, you know, traveling and going out and um, really expanding your, your surroundings so you can take in new information that can actually enhance whatever creative thought processes you have going on because, you know, when you're putting in new information, you're going to start seeing things in different and new ways. You know, many of you know that my time spent in Hawaii was very positive for me. It was a very good growing experience and I'm looking forward to having more experiences like that, you know, in Costa Rica and Arizona and, you know, to infinity and beyond, rather. <laughs> There's these things, they just happen and they're inspiration and they just flow, so Get unstuck, unclog your mind. That tip is really, well, my creativity tip of the day, is to get out of your city. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, another place. Like, you know, everybody's always telling me, Katarina, you're always traveling, oh my gosh. What are you, how are you doing this? This is so cool. But, you know, it started with me just like taking day trips often and, you know, really enjoying the fact that there's so much more inspiration that can come from being in a place that is outside of your own hometown. It's really about reflection and assimilating all of that new information that you've taken in and being able to use it in such a way that you can actually use it for creative projects, creative ideas, you know. Now what we have here is the brown Canadian ground squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I have been keeping a journal for as long as I can remember. That was always my thing, you know. I was always somebody that really journaled in pictures rather than writing because, you know, I was, I was shy. I didn't really want people to know what was going on for me in my life. But as I kept going, I realized that I had a gift. I had a, a gift for expressing words and uh, feelings through pictures. <laughs> Chicago land bitches. <laughs> Except for, I don't know if it's west side. I don't know where it's Northwest going. side. Northwest side. Chicago land bitches. <laughs>
And that's really how I started becoming an artist. It started as a therapeutic approach for me, and it was a way for me to communicate the feelings that I had inside of me without having to offend anybody, hurt anybody. It was just a pure emotional outlet for me. And so for me, I have you know, doodles upon doodles of, and writing upon writing in books like these. Uh, I think I have 12 volumes of books and writings that I've kept from the past, you know, 10 years. So if you're not setting aside at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes a day to be creative in some capacity, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because here you are taking in all of this new information and you're not putting anywhere, you're not using it to put anywhere. So, uh, whether that's taking pictures, writing a blog post, um, just writing it down in a journal, or drawing even a little picture, a little doodle, just to kind of jog your memory and keep you fresh about whatever it is that you, your art form is, I really encourage that because that gives you an outlet for all of the new stimulus, as well as you're building ideas in the now for future projects that you might want to go draw upon later. Like after you have like a really intense experience, you, it feels like you take off the, the blindfolds or something like that, you know, like the, the glasses, the sunglasses. They just taint everything and make it all look different and a little hard and difficult. You know, serendipity, synchronicity, it all means the same thing. Serendipity is more of an old-timey type way of saying synchronicity and people uh, in this common era that we're in, you know, the new age, whatever you want to call it. I just kept staying aligned with myself and in my joy and doing yes. things that I wanted to do and regardless of whether or not they thought I was being crazy or new agey or whatever. The next Empower Network blog. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, we call it synchronicity. And how it happens, uh, I was actually listening synchronistically to an Abraham Hicks video earlier today and she was speaking about how everything, our whole entire lives are made up of alignments, energetic alignments. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. It's alright because things happen, people change, life changes, and we move on. You know, everybody served a purpose for the point in their life that they were at. So, I mean, whether or not we are thinking about somebody, the fact that the people that are in our life are in our life for a reason, they are attracted to our literal energy, whatever it is that we're putting out, and it's going to be reflected back to us, whatever it is that we're putting out. So, when you're in a state of higher energy and you're just feeling so in love with life and you're feeling so passionate and you're feeling so motivated and driven and excited about your life in general, good things tend to happen. Have you noticed that? People want to call it synchronicity and serendipity that, oh wow, I wasn't expecting for that bill to be paid in full. Oh, I wasn't expecting to get dismissed from that court ticket that I had for, you know, driving through whatever. Like, <laughs> there's things that are really good at fortune that happens, but I don't think that it's a mistake. People call it serendipity and synchronicity and think that God on the external is influencing it on them. But what from I've learned is that we literally can block our signal to the universe by, you know, doing things that are out of alignment with ourselves. I think it's pretty common sense that it's almost impossible to do anything with this up your ass. Okay. <laughs> it's a no-brainer here. <laughs> if that's up your ass, you're going to have difficulty. Yeah. So lose the shovel. <laughs> and uh, start living a little bit more. And they bring down our overall energy. So when our energy is low, and we have misfortune happening in our lives, and we're feeling victimized and disempowered and frustrated, that keeps us from being able to communicate with universal intelligence in the best possible way. There's no hard feelings, it's, it's just life, it changes. So this whole process is a really beautiful gift that I am so excited to be sharing with you. So what my point is is that serendipity is a really cool phenomenon, it really is something amazing. Um, Katarina's a lot more happy now because 
this is no longer shoved up her ass. And you want to know what helps me not have a shovel up my ass? Um, you saw that Bashar said, If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. And it was so plainly obvious to you that you instantly took the clue on? Yeah. That wasn't that easy. You didn't make it I that easy. I think everyone tries to make personal development into like this big scary task and like like this big feat of impossible credulity and it was just like oh, I have to develop myself and they have like you know whips and chains and I have to develop myself and I have to develop myself. And yeah, there's some aspects. Ass. Of it, you know, like if you're wanting to learn more about finances and stuff like that, that you gotta be a little bit more diligent about. You're not gonna just magically like know stuff. But it's not just something that is happening to you, it's happening because of you. And if you really realize it and realize that you're a co creator in everything, in every single experience that you've had in your life, I mean, some people want to like debate this and think that, you know, people who got raped didn't deserve it, people who were abused as children didn't deserve it, you know. I don't know your particular situation, but I encourage you to look deeper without judgment and without like feeling um, threatened by that kind of idea. Because I've, I've actually looked really deeply into my own uh, series of misfortunes in my life, and I realized that I did have a part in creating it. No matter how drastically horrible it was, whether it was, you know, incurring fibromyalgia at age 18, you know, and having all of these serious, uneventful things happening to me. Do you know that it's entirely possible for you to have and experience synchronicity and serendipity in your world? But first, you kind of got to clean out the closet, so to speak. So we got to get real with the deal here. What's the real deal? How does this work? How does the awakening really work? It comes down to some nitty gritty things. Not, I mean, that makes sense, right? So here's the deal. And the real deal about real awakening is you got to face your shit. You got to deal with your demons and face your shit. There's no other way around it. Yeah, but... Let me, let me make something clear, you know, like these past couple weeks, you're not alone if you've been feeling lots of like tumultuous chaos and turmoil and all this kind of stuff. You're human and right now is a very challenging time. Like yes, we create our own experiences and our own reality so to speak, but there are also other influences that affect us as just a collective. Uh, you get exposed to different cultures, you get exposed to new ways of thinking, you get exposed to new art. Uh, all of these things are really important in uh, helping you power through any creativity blocks that you may have and also just helping you get a fuller sense of living and life because it feels really exciting to go somewhere new all the time, <laughs> you know? Well, not even all the time, but just like try something different. If you can't get out of your city, go to a different place you've never been to, like, you know, and try a new restaurant, try Try something out of the ordinary and that will help you get yourself out of the little bubble because really what this is all about is you know getting yourself out of your comfort zone and moving out of your own way and really realizing that life is a lot bigger than you've been letting it be for yourself. So what is it today that you could let go of right now that you are experiencing in your world that is stopping that flow, stopping that flow of serendipity and that flow of abundance and that flow of synchronicity. My, my deepest, greatest synchronicities have come after I have purged a major block. If you don't mind the airplane overhead, I'm going to keep talking anyway. So <laughs> those, those blocks literally kept me in a state of lack. They kept me in a state of victimization. They kept me in a state of feeling ill at ease within myself, my energy, my body, etc. The first most important thing is um, don't be afraid to be yourself because anything based on not being yourself, it's not going to do too well because it's going to be fake as hell. I mean, you got to be a natural at what you're doing. So you have to be aligned with yourself. So that means you got to be yourself while you're doing it because <laughs> people wonder why the hell they fail at everything. It's like, well, you're trying to do everything everybody else's way and because we live in the totalitarian fascist fourth fucking right 
um, basically nobody else's way is going to work because, you know, school's just like, obey, don't ask questions, and don't eat pop tarts or we're throwing you in jail. So, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just like we're so locked down. You know, a lot of people say that, you know, well, people are just lazy and they don't want to take responsibility. Well, it's not so much that they don't want to take responsibility. It's that we're trained by society to be, to be terrified of everything. You know, it's like we're terrified to take responsibility, to not take responsibility. We're terrified to live. We're terrified to die. We're terrified to love. We're terrified to, ha to hate. We're terrified to stay home. We're terrified to go outside. We're terrified to do anything and everything. And that's why George W. Bush has the war on terror. War on terror. He started that up. Because you're aligning with the idea of terror, so then your reality is like, oh my god, terror, be fucking afraid of everything. And that makes you fucking useless. <laughs> I mean, you're sitting there terrified of everything, you're cowering in a corner, even being afraid of the fact that you're in the fucking corner cowering. So I mean, it's like, it just totally paralyzes you. You just gotta kind of burst out and not be afraid to be yourself. And that's really the biggest key, because until you reach that, anything you try to do, is gonna be screwed. And the more and more that I let go of those things through various processes that I've learned, and you know, if you've been noticing uh, anything about science, like we have, you know, uh, solar flares and everything that are coming and hitting us from the sun. And I was watching a video of Leia's, Leia Tarunin, who is someone that I really adore and appreciate all of the videos that she makes, but, um, and it's like, wow, you know, I'm not the only one experiencing this right now. It's just like, you know, everything kind of just going wrong. Rather, my computer completely crashed the other day. You know, my relationship was like going down the tubes. And like, I don't, uh, there's just so much happening that it just feels like I'm being turned on my head. And, you know, it's, it's really easy to just kind of want to give up and feel like you can't move on anymore and you can't go forward you know even if you have to cry your eyes out because <laughs> I just you know there's only so much we can take as humans and be strong for so long and we just kind of have to just release just release everything that we're holding up inside and <laughs> so uh, my point though is that when I did these things to unleash and clear so to speak my life got ten times better and then it would get to a point where it was like, oh my god, I'm not used to this much abundance because the synchronicities would be happening all over the place. It would be so intense and fast and amazing. And I would I would be overwhelmed because my I was so used to what I was used to. Misery, suffering, frustration, pain, all of these things that just kept me in such a low frequency state where I was sick, I had relationship problems all over the place, I had you know, problems with my family, I had money issues, I had, you know, self-worth issues, everything. You know, I was just burdened with all of that. And by one by one by one, dealing with everything that I had on my plate, I noticed my life starting to get better. You know, in the morning it looks so different, everything is so much more open and able to be seen in a new way. It's so, it's so beautiful when you can actually realize like the gift in all of the circumstances that are happening to you. And you don't feel like a victim to it. You just see it as kind of an opportunity for new insight, new awareness, and new new beginnings. And you know, some people call this the awakening process. And people find it interesting that while they're awakening, they have more synchronicities happen in their life. They have more serendipity. You know. Sometimes, you know, they're driving down the road and it's all just green lights, you know? And sometimes they're getting like these three o'clock moments or they're getting 11-11 moments or one, two, three, four moments on the clock. Mine are 444 and 1111 and 1234. You know, I, I just love getting these number synchronicities because it's, for me, they're just kind of like the external showing me my alignment internally. And I really don't mean this in a corny, cheesy way. Like, I'm saying this from a point of actual, like, experience with this. It's not, it's not words, you know? I've, I've used to hate it when people would just tell me words to try to make me feel better, because it actually ended up doing the opposite, and I felt like, you know, why can't I get it together? Why, what the fuck is wrong with me, you know? Why do I feel this way? Um, 
But the thing is, is that I realized that nothing was really wrong with me, so to speak. It was just, just the way that I was choosing to see things and view things, and uh, even that wasn't wrong because it served its purpose too. You know, I've had my whole world turned upon its head uh, in the past week or so. You know, my course has definitely changed direction, and that's all right. You know, life is constant change. Or maybe you're kind of experiencing something that I was too a little while ago and you know, you just feel frazzled and just beat. <laughs> and I'm right there with you, but it, it all looks like it's coming up and things are moving forward and you know, it's, it is possible to be okay even when circumstances around you seem like they're shit and like like nothing is working right. <laughs> and I put a lot of faith in the universe these days. You know, whether it's me traveling or me meeting new people, I always trust that there's a purpose behind it. And because I have that belief, it's a very empowering belief and one that really stretches me into this, this place of flow and this place of trust where synchronicities are commonplace. So, here is just my heart to yours and my authenticity to yours. It's easy to like want to stay quiet during situations like this and to just not want to say anything at all because you're not wanting to be embarrassed or you're not wanting to have people see you be vulnerable. But I think that's where most of our power comes from is our power to be vulnerable and to be able to be connected to people. Because remember that we all play parts in our circumstances. We all play roles in whatever it is that we're experiencing. And you know, I, I f take full responsibility for everything that's been going on for me, you know? And it's, it's humbling to realize that, that you know, we are contributors to our pain. Probably sometimes the biggest contributors. Because we have that choice of whether or not we allow it to inundate us and completely destroy everything we got going on. It's a cycle of self-defeat and self... Um, just self-sabotage, really. But it doesn't have to stay that way. You can use whatever experiences you're having now as the fuel that's going to propel you further and the fuel that's going to take you to new heights and to new awarenesses that are going to create so much more joy in your life and you're going to be able to have an experience that surpasses whatever it was that you were having, you know? And we just expect synchronicity and we expect good fortune and we expect everything to be taken care of. And when you, you can really move into that place, you can make magic happen in your life. You really can. And you, ha you can trust that the obstacles that you're facing are there as, you know, blocks for you to overcome. They are there just as reflections for you to deal with. And it's, it's a very empowering place for you to realize that you are in control. God has made it so, you know, universe, whatever, has made it so you can really make the most impact on your life possible. So I hope that helps. And cut. And cut? Yeah. Um, I don't have scissors, I just have a shovel. You can press stop. Oh, okay. But it doesn't say stop, there's just this red button. You can press the red button, Dave. I can? Yeah. With that? Yeah. With this? Hey! <laughs> red button.